Leading up into the YNW Melly retrial, lots of problems have came up for the Florida rapper. Not only the scares of YNW Borland's recent actions that could lead to him getting a plea deal, but also YNW Melly's life inside of his jail cell. It has been extremely concerning, as it has gotten so bad that YNW Melly's mother started a petition to just have law officials look into it. 50,000 signatures later, and we have still heard nothing. YNW Melly's mother then had to take it public with an interview to state the following. When you saw Melly's statement just saying how he's been hurt, how he's scared for his life. As a mother, how did that make you feel? It's heartbreaking. It made me feel completely helpless. Broward Sheriff's Office definitely needs to be investigated. I mean, they they are making up their own rules. We tried to go to court about this situation. The judge really doesn't have any uh, jurisdiction when it comes to the jail because we actually had a hearing about the mistreatment of him and the jail kind of, they make their own rules. And I don't think that's fair because I know that they need to answer to someone too. As this has been a long time issue for YNW Melly right now, apparently Melly doesn't even get to look at his own mail that is sent to him or even use a phone to talk to family. My son has not been convicted of anything. And even other inmates that have been convicted or anything, they have the right to use a telephone. They have a right to just to be allowed to write letters to their loved ones to receive their mail they hold his mail they don't give it to him as this even led into melly's mother running into health concerns because of the stress and everything that is going on during the original ynw melly trial it got so bad that we even saw melly ask if she's okay inside of the courtroom But now lawyers are stating that YNW Borland may not even have another choice but to snitch on YNW Melly, causing even more issues for YNW Melly as well as his mother. As it was officially announced that YNW Borland was arrested for witness tampering charges, as while his house was raided by the feds one morning, they found insane paperwork stuffed into a suitcase that they can use against YNW Borland and YNW Melly. Melly's co-defendant YNW Borland was booked into a Miami jail Monday night and is being held behind bars on an out-of-county warrant. We just confirmed the warrant is out of Broward County for witness tampering. The warrant obtained by Long Crime Network states as follows. On or about April 10, 2023, continuing through and including July 22, 2023, Cortland Henry, aka Bortland, along with others, did unlawfully and knowingly engage in misleading conduct toward another person with the intent to cause or induce them to withhold testimony. The warrant continues the alleged witness had been summoned by the legal process to the jury trial of Jamel Demons, aka YNW Melly. The dates in the warrant are important. Jury selection for Melly started in mid-April, and a judge declared a mistrial on July 22nd, the same day the warrant claims Bortland allegedly tampered with the witness. As it would be announced by Bryce and Paul, here are the images of alleged notes discovered during the home raid of YNW Bortland's home last week as filed into the Broward clerks by the state. It was alongside these photos here of YNW Bortland detailing where certain jurors were sitting during the original YNW Melly trial, along with a description of what they even looked like. To understand how serious this truly is, here's DJ Academics' reaction. To keep it real, this is sloppy. Portland, how the f*** you gonna have the notebook of the jurors in your house? Like, God damn. Holy sh You know what I mean? Like, brother, like, come the f*** on. It, 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 it's, like, it's like doing a m*** and, and having... The, the surveillance tape in your DVD player or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, come on, bro. Like, like they raid your crib and and the and the, the surveillance footage of the is in your DVD player. They're like, oh, okay, thank you, brother. This can't be at your crib. As due to this, YNW Melly has now received even more charges on his long list, and it's looking very concerning now. The state filing six new charges against Demons and two others who were allegedly involved. The charges include tampering with a witness, directing the activities of a criminal 
solicitation or conspiracy to commit tampering and unlawful use of a two-way communication device. Now, a couple of those charges actually carry a life in prison sentence if there's a conviction. This entire situation is not settled well for YNW Melly. He's been looking very angry and upset lately in court hearings, and it's pretty understandable. However, Melly's situation gets even worse. It all begins with the new lead prosecutor teaming up with Danny Polo. Danny is the undercover police agent who was wearing a shysty mask during the original trial. Now, these two together investigated through all of YNW Melly's social medias, to which they found a very concerning post. As YNW Melly posted an interesting photo to his personal Facebook account claiming that YSL and his team YNW may have ties. Same thing, the use of the uh, slap term, five point star, sneak. Uh, he's saying he's YSL, saying he's like, I'm Doug, and uh, he puts up his YNW uh, for life hashtag on it with the five point star as well. Mr. Demons has the big B hand signs posted. Uh, displayed okay and see the individuals again i'm assuming that's also the young thug that's also <laughs> kind of yes also important to your investigation correct yes also publicly available for anyone to see in fact the lead prosecutor believes that YNW and YSL have street ties connected to one another, which would then even lead into Bryson Paul tweeting, Detective Danny Polo on what slap means. Slap means sliming up all the time. It came out of the YSL language, and the Reds started copying it. YSL is the team made up of Reds. In this picture, YNW Melly is with Young Thug, who is currently on trial for Rico. The YSL team is throwing up Red signs. As prosecutors believe that YSL is connected to YNW. Street members and street teams often share way too much on social media, whether it is to gain their own social media clout or they're just not smart enough to realize what they're saying is very illegal. Such as an example a few weeks ago, a man named Jay Hood, a close friend of King Vaughn, as well as someone who lives in O-Block, shared a secret of what Melly told King Vaughn a few years ago. Did Vaughn really tell you that Melly told him that he was two friends? He ain't come out and say, like, we got into an argument. And so, you know, if, 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 you know, when people could say something without saying it. And so he told me, like, once I posted what I posted, he, Vaughn was mad at me, bro. Why you put up there, bro? Walk the bam. I'm like, you, you sitting up here, like, you know the love we got. You do this for us, but you gonna trust that a is two friends. And he said, them was trying to extort him. And so I'm like, if they was trying to extort him, then, then why are you still around them? Where he is literally revealing information that we never even knew, involving Sack Chaser and Juvie going after Melly for financial gain. And even that new interview is now being added to the lawsuit that is going against YNW Melly right now. In the coming weeks, Melly will be returning for his retrial, but he's also now facing a massive lawsuit against the families of Sack Chaser and Juvie. The report goes and reads, this is the video we requested from prosecutors in the state of Florida versus Jamel Demons. We have the honor of representing the family of Christopher Thomas, aka YNW Juvie. Melly's defense attorneys filed a motion for protective order to prevent me from obtaining it. The video was on Melly's cell phone, and it was recorded a month after he allegedly got his two friends. It doesn't show a man in mourning or seeking answers for his lost friends, and instead it mocks them, if not takes credit for it through false expression. No regrets for the shit I did that also mean for the name. As not only that, they're also going to be using other evidence found on Melly's phone as well, such as text messages where YNW Melly literally admits to doing the crime. The PZ Gambino account asked him if he was okay, and his response was, I did that and placed a smiley face emoji. And the next message from 10 2018 at 1602. The YNW Melly count says what? After that, shh, S H H H H while also sharing the concerning evidence that was shared by Sergeant Williams, who would go on and reveal during the Melly trial that there is no way this could have been a drive-by, and the person that committed the crime had to have been sitting in the back left seat. Assignment, which is to determine if this was a drive-by. And my determination was that this is not a drive-by. 
and it's based upon this picture here, which is a very good picture to describe it. All of these rounds are done. Um, one is done at an um, at a stationary position. It's at a stationary position when all when all but one of these rounds are going in. The one round that that uh, has some movement in it, which is round uh, site L here, the, uh, the is actually moving in that to create the, uh, the little bit of a that you see there. Number, you said 17 outside the car. How many rounds were inside the car? Three. And can you exclude for Mr. Williams and Mr. Thomas is coming from outside of the car. Yes. From the pass the driver's side back seat. As to the shot that Christopher Thomas, where did that from? Driver's side back seat. Oh. Is it possible for there to have been two inside that car? No. Why not? There is no time. As with the jury hearing Sergeant Williams reveal the crime must have happened inside of the car, we would then see YNW Juvie's mother go to the stand and share who was sitting where, as she has known all four of these boys for several years. Are you related to one of the kids in this case? Yes, I am. How's that? I'm his mother. And who is that? Christopher Thomas. Positive 219.15. Um, Ms. Phillips, did you see who entered into the occupants who entered into that gray, gray Jeep? Mm -hmm. Do you recognize where your son entered that gray Jeep? Yes. Which seat? Um, he got in the back seat on the um, right hand side. Did you recognize the individual that got into the back seat on the left side, the rear driver's side? Yes. And who was that individual? Jamel. And Jamel, is that the defendant? Jamal Demons? Yes, ma'am. Then when this was all announced, Boosie would then do an emergency interview discussing Melly's new situation, where he would just say in simple terms, when the feds want you, they'll do anything to get you. Now they're putting you more charges on them, and then, um... When they want you, they want you. I knew that, I knew they wanted them bad when they waited for that law to get passed. They waited oh, so all the way... The penalty. So it'd be 8-4. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, they waited all the way to that law got passed to take him to trial. Yeah, he was in jail for what, two years, three years? Yeah, they could have been took you to trial. You're right. They waited till that law got passed and took him to trial a couple months later. When they want you, they want you, man. Uh, just don't see how he, he didn't get a bond after a mistrial. Yeah. That made me like, God damn. Yeah. Like, after a mistrial, that doesn't, that... That doesn't happen, really. Now, this is a very true statement made by Boosie. It's also exactly why once the new evidence was released recently, Bortland's arrest and even the issues in his jail cell, YNW Juvie's father would then go on to do an interview where Juvie's father would want to provide even more evidence for the new lead prosecutor as he would go on to expose how YNW, Melly, and Bortland were witness tampering and even what code words they used to make Melly's ex-girlfriend not testify. Both... Uh, Melly, Jamel Demons, YNW Melly, and uh, Portland Henry, who is known as YNW Portland, are now charged with witness tampering. It sounds like the prosecutors are saying there was this kind of crazy way that Melly was communicating. He wasn't allowed to use the phone, but he was passing notes to people, and then this person's calling this person, and then that person. They like to me, they're going through extreme measures to try to cover up or convince people not to testify like Mariah, Mariah mom. They was using cold words like Rihanna and they said Rocket's baby mom and- However, it's when YNW Juvie's father would then share what happened on the morning of the crime, the moment that he woke up and got all of the messages on his cell phone, where he would also have to drive down to law enforcement to clarify if it was his son or not, as YNW Melly's mother would send him a message saying something very weird. He wasn't, yeah. he had switched vehicles, at least that's what they said in the first trial, that he had gotten into, it was suggested through a defense witness, the one and only defense witness, that he had gotten yeah. into that other vehicle. Yeah, they were telling me that I drove down there that morning to go like uh, identify Chris. I met Moretti down there that morning, another 26. And on the way down there, when I talked to Jamie, she told me the same thing. Like, 
tell him, tell him, don't talk to the media and tell him Melly wasn't there. Instantly, my antennas went up because I didn't understand. Like, I knew from that on that day, I knew something was up. As he would then go on to share the last moment that he saw his son, including on how the trial is truly affecting him and his family, which really gives insight onto why they are suing YNW Melly. Last time I spoke to Chris, it was like two days before the incident, him and Melly FaceTimed me. And that's the last time I saw him. Last time I spoke to him was like that same week, man. <sighs> It just hurt me to, to see that the love that he had for Melly, for Melly to do that to him. I see if it, it's, it was one of his enemies or somebody, he did something in wrong or something, but the way it happened, how it happened, who did it, it just, oh, heartbreaking on both sides. All of this legal wrangling that's leading to a delay in the second trial, how are you? Well, I'm taking it one day at a time. You know, you gotta go through this process once again. I'll relive it once, once again.